inspired on Liberty Radio. Good evening and welcome to Be Inspired. May God bless you abundantly. And as you may have seen on social media and the groups of the church, we're going to be doing something very special here tonight. I hope that you have with you already your Bible. Again, as we said earlier in the video, your Bible doesn't have to be exactly like this. But please try to make sure that you have a Bible ready with you. In a moment, we're going to tell you why we have the Bible with us. Now, we have a little teaser of the previous football match we had between the VYG and the police. Here's a little taste of what's coming on the 22nd, but of course, in a much larger scale. So on the 22nd, we're going to do that, but bigger and better. We are expecting uh, two or three times the amount of people that were in that specific event. And if you haven't got yet your tickets for the, the football match between the, the VYG pastors and the police officers, the Met police officers, which we're doing in order to raise awareness against one of the greatest problems that affects our society, which is violence among youths, knife violence, gun violence. And we are determined that these numbers, the, the, the scary numbers of how common this has become, these numbers have to come down. And I tell you, if there is one work that can prove that people who are involved in this lifestyle can really change is the work of the VYG, the work of the church. We have several uh, men and women of God among us who were involved in that lifestyle and today they are truly regenerated. I have here with me Pastor Morris and Pastor Conrad. Uh, for me, Pastor Conrad, and I believe those who are of the faith and are connected with us, they feel the same. I, I, I believe true regeneration of a person's character only happens when the Lord Jesus comes in and, and changes the person. And oh, 100%. There's lots of, there are lots of community schemes. There are lots of things available for young people to get involved in. But it's only really a temporary thing or it's like a, you know, temporary, you know, escape. I myself, I never grew up in violence or gangs or anything, but where I grew up, it was everywhere. And I never saw anything really change a person's life outside mm -hmm. of having a relationship with God, the work that the VYG does. That's right. So what we're doing is very important. We hope that you can join us and you can get your, your tickets at your local UCKG. And actually, this is a great opportunity for your children, members of your family who've never been to the church to have their first contact with the work, the social and spiritual work of the church there on the day. Also today, I received a very nice message from one of our pastors that I want to share with you. Uh, as you know, we're doing the work to gather the non-perishable food items and water for Ukraine. And have a look at this picture that the pastor from Woolwich sent me. One of our members brought in uh, over 1,000 liters <laughs> of water. Over 1,000 liters of water. All that water that you see there is going to make its way to the Ukraine. If you are helping with this initiative to bring humanitarian aid to this part of the world that needs help right now. And as I said here on Sunday, who knows, you know, tomorrow may be another part of the world and we're going to help there as well. Who knows? I, I, I hope this doesn't happen here on our own turf. But if it does, I'm sure that the church is all over Europe, which, which is our our. I wouldn't say catchment area, but I would say realistically the, the area that they can do something about it, I'm sure they would come 
to help as well. And now is our time to step in. Uh, feel free to talk to your workplace, to talk to your local supermarkets if they want to chip in and help with donations of non-perishable food, okay? We are already packaging the items, preparing the pallets because time flies and we need to get this ready. Okay, you have your Bible there with you now. We went to talk to some people here on the streets around the area of Finsbury Park to ask them, do you have faith? Do you believe in God? Do you believe in anything? And what has your faith done for you? Here's what they said. Do you have faith? Yes. Well, I'm Christian, but I don't know if I believe so much, if you know what I mean. I have my own views. I've been christened, but I'm not not very strong believer in it. I've not really taught much of it, but in school, so there's not much spoke about, so I haven't really, I don't really know much about it, so no, not really. I believe in science and, and evolution. I'd like to believe in in people, like we have the power to change things, but yeah, other than that, not really. Uh, well, I was raised Catholic, I'm from Ireland. Um, personally, I'm not super religious, but uh, I'd like to believe there's something. I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself a complete atheist, but I'm not really practicing, if that makes sense. I just believe in science. I don't believe in one particular thing. I've, I've drawn on lots of different faiths, I'd say, over the years. Yes. In our language, we call it Emuna. Yeah. What language is that? That's Hebrew. What has this faith done for you um, and what results have you seen through your faith? Nothing really, to be honest with you. Like, it doesn't really, you know, come into my life in any way. So just being christened, that's it really. Other than that, yeah, nothing. It doesn't really help me in any way. If you believe in evolution, then you're seeing results every single day. But they're obviously very small ones. <laughs> so I am... If I was religious, then that, that, that question may have more impact. Obviously, as, as a non-religious person, it doesn't, uh, maybe. I can't think of anything, no. So, I prayed for things and they've happened, and I prayed for things that haven't happened. I don't know. It's, it's a really hard question to answer, I think. Yeah, I think it's, it helps people kind of get up out of bed in the morning sometimes. Uh, just hoping that there's something out there. The thing is, I guess when good things happen, I don't really relate it to faith or like believing in them. I just think, oh, that's good. You know, we have the power of making things happen uh people can make things happen uh but like sadly that's not very often so yeah but positive attitude is a result of it i think that's probably the only thing i can say really i think i didn't say anything from from the science in my relative life some people believe in god some don't but you see that people don't usually see the result of their faith. And this is why we live in a society that more and more people are, are fleeing anything to do with God. When we go out to the streets to evangelize, it seems like society is vaccinated against God, against church, against faith. Why is that? If the, UC, if, if, if the United Kingdom was once the cradle of the revival of faith, it was, we have here, for example, the Bible in our hands. And this is a New King James translation, which is a derivative of the King James translation, which was sanctioned and done, prepared here in the UK. But many people nowadays they either don't believe in God or if they believe is a religious thing. They don't see results of their faith. Pastor Morris, I believe this is one of the main reasons why there are many people who are almost vaccinated against God. They don't believe that God can do anything. People who say, you know, I, I believe that if God is there, he's too busy to look at me. After all, we have... You know, now over 7 billion people, correct me if I'm wrong, over 7 billion people yes, in the world, yes, right? Yes. Over 7 billion people in the world. Why would God care about me? Why would my problems mean anything to him? And so people don't even, sometimes they pray as a way to play the lottery. Let, let's see, you know how you play the lottery and you, you don't really hope or, or you don't really expect rather anything to happen. That's how some people pray sometimes. 
They pray, they talk to God, but they don't really believe anything's going to happen. It's like playing the lottery, like rolling the dice. Whereas when you live by faith and you believe that your God is real, you're not rolling the dice or playing the lottery. You are sure that He's going to answer. But the problem with the people that you saw there in the interviews on the street is exactly this, Pastor Morris, is that maybe, and we we speak to people many times here in, in the street, and we see that they know the Bible, Pastor Morris. I come from a country where, I, I, I am an example of this. When I started in the church and the pastor said, the first few times I was in the church, the pastor said, open your Bible in whatever book, chapter this, verse this. I didn't even know. I was so ignorant of the Bible that I didn't even know that the chapter and the verse, which one was the big number or the little number. I would ask, I would ask the assistant, chapter, is that the big number or the little? That's how ignorant I was. So when I arrived in the UK, and virtually everybody I spoke to on the streets, they had the knowledge of the Bible. I was surprised. But these people, many times, Pastor Morris, they are disillusioned with faith because they had a religious experience. That is, having a religious experience is one thing. Having a godly experience is something else. And people had a religious experience that actually hurt them, vaccinated them about uh, against God and today they don't even believe that God can change their lives. Yes, and when they hear us saying about faith, the works of faith in their mind comes only that bad experience that they have with the religion and immediately they say, no, I don't want or when they hear the word church, they say, oh, that's not for me. But the thing is that when a person is in need and they re recognize, no, there is must be something there to help me. The Word of God is there. The, the work that the church do reaching out to people is to show them this. And if they, let's say, not uh, have that uh, experience in their mind and they are open to experience something different, which is God in their life, they will see the transformation that all the time we show here with the testimonies in the church. And I actually, I want to ask you something. If you had an experience like this before, Maybe you were the kind of person that you were vaccinated against church, vaccinated against God. No one could tell you about the things of God. And yet today you are in the presence of God. If this is you, let us know there in the comments, right there, if you had an experience like this before. And if you changed, is because you saw the power of God. Because this is the thing, convincing, trying to convince someone that God is alive is a waste of energy because you cannot convince a person that God is alive with an argument, right? You, your argument can't be so perfect that you will convince someone, an atheist, an unbeliever, that God is alive, that He can change people's lives. Your argument will never be as good as convincing someone. What convinces a person that God is alive is when they have an experience with the power of God. And maybe that's what happened to you. That's why I came to the church. Because I saw that my mom who started before me, she had an experience with the power of God. Maybe you are in the presence of God today because someone in your family came to the church. You saw, they didn't even tell you come to church with me, but you saw a change in them. And then you said, no, something's different. Let me go there. That's what I did. I, I, I saw that my mom, who had constant headaches, who was depressed, who used to complain about life every time, you know, she, who had like a, a, a nervous breakdown, a mental breakdown, whatever you call it. I saw that she never again complained about her problems. And then I said, hold on a second, something's different there. And that's what brought me to the church. Why did we ask you to grab a Bible? I'm going to tell you why. Because the Bible cannot be something for you to, to read only. The Bible cannot be something for you to study. Because there are many people, and please don't be offended with me. If you say, Bishop, but I, I'm watching this program for the first time. 
and I feel offended because I read the Bible. I, 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 I believe in the Bible. But maybe you believe in the Bible in a religious way. Understand, I'm not attacking you. I'm trying to awaken your faith because what is written here is power. And I want you to do something. This Sunday, we're going to pray for the fathers. We're going to have the Lord's Supper. But I would like everybody who's watching me now in every church, in every UCKG, you are going to bring your Bible. Bishop, I bring my Bible anyway. Okay, good. So bring your Bible. But you who maybe you, you don't usually carry your Bible. Maybe you have a Bible, you know, uh, dusty in a cupboard somewhere there in your house. Maybe you don't go to church. Maybe someone sent you a clip of this program and you don't go to church. You, you don't really believe in God as such, but you've got a Bible there. I want to make a challenge with you. Take your Bible to the church this Sunday. Because when you go to the church this Sunday, you're going to open this Bible in the promises that God made and you're going to make a challenge with God. You're going to say to Him, my God, if you are real, if your power is real, if this is not a charade, a lie, a religion, but if what is written here is true, then I want to see your power in my life. And you will. You will because the people who came to the Lord Jesus before and challenged Him, those who came to God and challenged Him, they saw result. Bishop, isn't that something presumptuous? Isn't that something extremely presumptuous to say to God? No, it's not. Because if you do it with humility and sincerity, wanting to see His power, then He comes down and manifests His power. This is why we ask you to have your Bible with you, to prepare your Bible with you for this program. Because whether you are a church member or you are not a church member, when you make this challenge with God there with the Bible in the service on Sunday, then something has to happen. It doesn't matter if you're a lawbreaker or if you abide by all the laws. It doesn't matter if you're a, a witch doctor or if you've been a church person all your life. Maybe you've been a church person all your life, but you've never seen results. You've never seen the power of God in your life. Then this Sunday you are going to see. And please, don't show up, don't arrive in the church any time that you want. Be here early. When you are going to a serious commitment, you're there first thing. So on Sunday, don't show up halfway through the service and expect something to happen. Be there for you to see the power of God. If something is life-changing, if, if a situation that is going to happen in your life is life changing. If you have the interview of the job of your dreams, you wouldn't dare arrive late. You would be there an hour, two hours, three hours before, I don't know, but you would be there on time because you want to see that situation that changing your life forever. And this Sunday, this is how important this is. The challenge is set. And tonight, we are not going to pray for you here because the prayer, the challenge, will happen on Sunday in the service. Let's see what's going to happen tomorrow here in the Night of the Soul. Are you separated from God? It is as though there is a wall that prevents you from reaching Him. This is why coldness has taken you over from within, neutralizing your faith. God has never caused separation between himself and man. However, there is one thing capable of causing this rupture. Sin. There are people who are experiencing this situation. Today, God is calling for those who are sincere to tear down this wall and restore communion with him. This Wednesday, in the night of separation, at 7.30 p.m. at 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London, N4 3NX or at any universal church near you. Very well, tomorrow we will have the Night of the Soul at 7.30 p.m. in all our churches. And if for some reason you cannot make it in the evening, do come during the day. And Friday, we are going to have 
a special service to break the chains of the devil. Friday will be Friday the 13th. Yesterday in the program, we explained uh, that there isn't on record the reason why Friday the 13th is indeed, and this is indeed used by many who practice evil to hurt people, but we don't know why that date. But we know that people do this on this date. So Friday now, we are going to break the chains of the devil. And Friday, I will be holding all the services. 7 in the morning, 10 in the morning, 3 afternoon, and 7.30 in the evening. Because we are determined that whatever chains are in your life, they are going to be broken. May God bless you. We'll see you here again tomorrow at the same time. Get ready for the challenge this Sunday. And get ready, you who are a father. We're going to pray for you and we'll be taking part of the Lord's Supper. God bless you. If you'd like to donate in support of this work, please do so by any of the following ways. Via online banking using our details on screen, through the QR code which will take you to the payment page on our website, or you can gift aid your donation writing through the email address on screen. Thank you for your help.